In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the do's and the don'ts of makeup. This side is giving skin, it's giving fresh. My eyes are open and everything just works for my face shape. This side is giving cakey, it's giving texture, it's giving scary, and I'm not enjoying it. So if you wanna see how to go from this to this, then keep on watching. So right into it. The first mistake that people make is not prepping the skin and by prep i don't mean primer you don't need primer but moisturizer so obviously this is going to be our do side and this is going to be the don'ts um on this side i've got nothing on i've washed my face my skin feels tight it feels dry and it feels rank on this side i have prepped with my toucher dewy skin cream you can see the glow over here it's just going to plump the skin i don't like really use primer that much anymore so i don't think it's either a do or a don't it's uh it doesn't matter and in this video we're going to be using the same products on both sides just different techniques to show you that it doesn't matter what you have it matters how you use it that sounds wrong anyway we're gonna be using the thin lizzie airbrush foundation starting on the good side i'm just gonna take a pump and i'm gonna start lightly applying it to my face a damp sponge is the easiest thing to apply foundation with it's so foolproof and i'm just gonna pat in a really light layer of that this kind of outside area of my face actually doesn't need that much coverage so we're only gonna do a thin layer to even out the skin tone and you see that tiny amount has taken us from this to this if you do need a little bit more coverage instead of going in with such a thick layer just add a second one remembering that we're going to apply concealer around the eye area so you don't need to apply foundation there if you're not going to wear concealer good go for it but we're trying to minimize the amount of makeup that we have on our face now on this side, we're gonna be giving very 2016 vibes. We're gonna take a shit ton of foundation. We still see this on TikTok. And I'm gonna, you know, do the thing and take it on the brush and then just like pile it on. This is gonna make me cry. Nobody on this earth needs to be wearing this much foundation. You can if you want. I know that makeup has no rules, okay? I don't care if you have the most cystic acne in the world and you wanna cover it. You don't need this. If you want a lot of coverage, go in with a full coverage foundation or a thicker formula, and then you can put a thin veil of that on. You don't need this. We're gonna pat this in with a sponge, and a sponge honestly is gonna help because it's gonna absorb a lot of the excess product. And I'm ignoring what I said over here, I'm putting foundation absolutely everywhere. Now that my sponge is being overloaded and I feel like I have like tar on my face, we will move on to concealer. I'm gonna be using the Anastasia Magic Touch Concealer. This shit is full full coverage and when you get a product that's like this hard out you really really do want to be careful with it i'm going to conceal the under eye area i'm going to start with only that i might want to add more later but this is what we're going to start with i'm going to take my damp sponge and we are going to lightly spread this around the under eye area and pat it in you know it's easier to add more it's harder to take away so it's just safer to be more on the conservative side bitch did i lie I told you that concealer is full on. I can't lie. I love full coverage and I do want a little bit more and it is okay to layer. I want a little bit of brightness here and a little bit around here and by the nose. Also, if you want to amplify the coverage of things, pat very lightly with the sponge. If you're going in like this, the sponge is going to absorb a lot more. Look at that coverage. Look at that brightness without using the whole tube. I probably should be showing you guys this side first, eh? So that I can show you like how I used to do it or like how you shouldn't do it and then I'll show you how to fix it yeah we'll do that for the next step anyway on the don't side we're gonna take this again really really full coverage concealer and we're gonna put the whole fucking bottle on I used to do this this was very 2016 to just pile it on like this now we're gonna take our damp sponge and begin to tap this out and what is gonna happen is since there is so much product and we're using a sponge the sponge is like really really working overtime to soak up the excess product so you're gonna have struggles with blending and a lot of people will blend it they'll see an unblended edge like that and then just take the sponge over it but then you've got so much product on what ends up happening is you spread your highlighter all over the face and then you end up your whole face just looks white you see on this side we still have like the gradient we've got our skin tone gradient into a highlighter on this side 
we've pretty much just blown our highlighter everywhere and just created a lighter skin tone. And my eyes are beginning to water because of the amount of product that is surrounding them. Zooming you in for a quick moment, change your quality to 4K if you are on YouTube, that will really, really expose what's going on. This side is still nice and thin and we've just concentrated the highlight where we want it. This side is already starting to begin to look like clay. We've brought the brightness everywhere and our skin is suffocating. Also, if you notice, there's a color difference. This side is so extremely full coverage that we're starting to look fake. It's looking yellow. Do you know what I mean? Whereas this side, we're letting our natural skin tone show th through so it's easier to match our foundation. You see, this matches a lot better than this. Same fucking products, it's just, you see? Mm -mm. Now, my favorite part, cream bronzer. This was one of my first viral videos and I'm gonna show you what not to do. I'm gonna take this, this is a stick bronzer. This one's from Cryolin, so you might not recognize the packaging, but just let's pretend it's like the Fenty Beauty stick or something. We see a lot of people go straight in with the stick on the skin, like that. We see people carving out a shape, like that. That's what we see people doing. We, we take our sponge and we go to blend this out it can be a little bit difficult. It's actually a good thing on this side that we have so much product on our face because this thick layer of foundation and concealer is actually gonna make this a lot easier to blend. But the problem is also is that you can't control the depth by just chucking it on like that. You might end up with too much bronzer and it might end up looking too dark. That actually looks great. Just like I said, we've got so much product on our face, it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to blend this out. But if you were wearing a typical amount of foundation, dragging the stick on your face is gonna move everything underneath. And especially if you're using a stick that is too dry, like the Fenty Beauty one, it can start to become very difficult. And we're encountering the same struggle as we did with the, uh, what's the name of it? Concealer. We've got too much product and it's getting hard to blend and to counteract that I'm having to do like really 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 light bounces and it just still doesn't look the best but a much easier way is to take your stick bronzer or whatever cream bronzer whatever and apply it very very lightly to either your sponge or your brush first then I tap it into the sponge with the back of my hand really get it in there now we can take the sponge straight on the face and this way it's almost like it's almost like we're not even blending we're just applying it and it's blending in straight away does that make any sense and by taking off any excess product we're really controlling what we're doing with this and you see that was so much quicker and faster for me to get such a natural and clean effect this side i had to work i had to blend and switch and do this and this and this to get it to look like that this side i should a couple taps and it's on. It's the same with liquid or cream blush. We're gonna use the Made by Mitchell blush as an example. I see people on TikTok take the wand and apply it directly to the face like that. We're gonna take the bottom of the sponge to blend it out. And as you can see, I've already put way, way, way too much product. And if you're not careful, swiping this on your face can disturb your foundation a little bit. This is just fucking mental. So I'm gonna take my concealer side of the sponge and thankfully this is so choked with concealer that it's actually gonna help to blend this out. Even if it ends up looking good, effectively what we're doing is using more product to hide more product. Does that make any sense? I've put on too much blush. So to fix that, I'm adding concealer on top. So we're just adding a lot of unnecessary layers on the face. And even then, I honestly think this is a little bit fucked. It's gone everywhere. What I am gonna do instead is take a little bit of this blush on the back of my hand, kind of spread it around with my finger, and then take the bottom side of my sponge and tap in a couple times. Then, look at that. Much, much more control. We're not wasting product. We're not adding unnecessary products to cover up mistakes. Look at how fast and easy that was. That literally took me five seconds. Are you joking me? And now, you're beginning to see the more layers that we add, the more muddy and heavy this side is starting to look. Everything is sort of starting to mesh together. Whereas this side, we still have our defined highlight, blush and bronzer, but it just looks so one with the skin. Now, I don't usually do this step, but we're gonna do it today. We're gonna use liquid highlighter. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Glowgasm Wand. This is something I see so much on TikTok and it makes me wanna rip my eyes out. 
people load up the applicator with highlighter and then again just use such a heavy hand that just broke my heart because this is really expensive but we're then going to take the side of our sponge and begin to tap it out again our sponge is like really our saving grace on this side because it's soaking up excess product but when you blend it in one there's already so much product on our face that the foundation, concealer, and everything is just absorbing this. We're going to do the same thing as the blush. I'm going to take a little bit on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to take the pointy side of my sponge and just load it up with that highlighter. And I'm taking the pointy side because with very, very light taps, I'm going to start to add this to the cheekbone. And can you see just that beautiful effect that this is giving us. Look at that. Fucking beautiful, precisely placed. And this just looks like a, oh my god, a greasy mess. Like, come on. And now my fucking sponge is like loaded with highlighter. This is like $90. Why did I do that? Now, Jesus, take the wheel. Let's move on to powder. If you take anything from this video, this is one of the biggest mistakes that people do when they do their makeup. Majority of people, they don't want cakey makeup. They don't want to feel it. They don't, you might want full coverage, but you don't want it to look cakey. I'm going to show you how to never, ever, ever apply your powder unless you're a fucking drag queen, okay? This is the one size translucent powder. Again, same product on both sides. On this side, the wrong side, we are going to take a powder puff and just saturate it with powder. Dipping right in there, look at how much is on that puff. And I see people do this, I'm not exaggerating. This is a real thing. And, oh my god, just watch. I'm gonna load up the side with a fuck ton of powder, all at once. Just, you can see it on the skin. Oh my god, and I can feel it tightening, like it just feels like I'm baking a cake on my face. And then, I hate baking. I can't stand it. Majority of situations, especially when you have this much product on, it does not look nice. It does not look nice. So what are we going to do? We're going to bake. We're going to take a fuck ton of powder and just chuck it right on the under eye. Holy fuck. This is what we want to do instead. Taking my sponge and I'm just going to blend out any under eye creases. Now I'm going to take a lovely little clean, small pointed powder puff. We're going to dip in once to the powder and then we're gonna take the back of our hand and tap off the excess and really press it in to the puff. Now, with light tapping motions, we're gonna to begin to set the face. You wanna do this slowly. If you introduce so much powder all at once, it's gonna go cakey just cause the, the powder and the amount of cream you have on, it's gonna pull and it's just gonna suck all the moisture out at once. That's not what you want. You want to go nice, nice, nice and slow and introduce them to each other very, very slowly. You can't see the powder as I'm pressing it in. The second I press, my, my skin is absorbing it and then I take it off and you can't see it. That's what should be going on. And I'm just going to set any areas where I don't want shine, which is pretty much the whole center of my face. You don't need to set out here. You can if you want to. It's not the biggest deal, but I kind of like keeping that skin glow out here. You don't crease out there, you don't make any movement, so makeup's not gonna crease, it's not gonna go weird, so you can afford to leave that unset. Now, we're gonna dust off all the powder and all the bake on the side. Oh my god. Now here is where you're really gonna start to see why we don't do this. Now, I'm gonna zoom you in in a second, but just from where you're sitting now, can you see the difference? This side is giving skin, it's giving blur, it's giving everything we want it to give. This side it's giving, I've got hair and concealer and my eyelashes, fuck off. This side is giving cake. Now that you're zoomed in, again, change your quality to 4K. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Look at when I move. This side is just so crepey and thick and we've lost that skin glow over here. That's beautiful, this is giving skin. This is giving mask. Again, it's okay if you want it, but there is just no need for, for that much foundation and that much powder. It just doesn't look good, period. You can get the same look 
by using full coverage foundation and a light amount of powder. Same look, but without all the negatives. And remember, I'm in front of a nice camera in front of some nice lights. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my phone and I'm gonna take my back camera to show you what this really looks like. Let's move this way so that you're not in the light. The iPhone camera is not very nice on the skin, especially in bad lighting. Can you see how heavy this side looks? And it almost looks kind of gray and you can really 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 see the creepiness in this situation whereas this side of the face let's move this into not the best lighting to give it a fair shot we just look a lot it looks like we've got makeup on and i don't have perfect skin so i hope you're not expecting that it just looks a lot thinner and nicer and easier on the skin as you can see whereas again this side is just Ooh, 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 ooh. Now for powder bronzer, we're gonna use the Fenty, that is not powder. We're gonna use the Fenty Beauty powder bronzer. This is not the biggest deal in the world, but what I see a lot of people doing is picking up their bronzer as you would, and then going like this. They're, they're scratching at their face. And this brush is super, super soft, which is probably a good thing. But when you do that, you're disturbing all of the makeup underneath. Imagine this, your skin has texture. It's like, imagine it as sandpaper. You've got a layer of thick foundation, a layer of concealer, and a layer of powder. If I'm gonna take something like this, something abrasive and scrub at it, just imagine all the high points of the sandpaper all of that foundation, concealer, and powder is getting scrubbed off by the brush. And what's going to start to happen is all of your little bumps and texture are going to start to show up. And also, with this motion, we're applying way, way, way too much product. Can you just kind of see all the little bumps on my face? Like, they're starting to show through. On this side of the face, I'm not even gonna go in and pick up any more bronzer because there's already so much on the brush. Usually you just tap in and tap the brush off. Now, instead of scrubbing, we're gonna tap. I'm holding the end of the brush to get really, really light motions. Can you see if I hold it here, it's quite harsh. If I hold it here, the motion flows a lot better. And then we're just gonna start to tap in little circle motions just in the area where we want the most color, which is obviously right in this cheekbone. And then we're gonna tap this off, any excess product, then we're gonna start to tap to blend out the edges. And it's gonna stop it from going everywhere, like this one. This way you've just got a lot more control over the product. And as you can see, we're getting an instant beautiful blend. It's not lifting up any texture. Everything is staying down on the face, whereas this side, oh, look at all of that. Same around the forehead, we're just gonna pat. Mm. Forgot this forehead on this side. Let's let's do some scrubby action over here. No, 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 no. Look at this. Look at all the little bumps that are showing through. Whereas this side, it looks so natural. It looks perfect. That side, oh, can you see all of that? Now it's the same deal with blush. I'm gonna take the Benefit Crystal Blush. This is a beautiful color but it's also dangerous because it's so bright. On this side, we're gonna do the scrubby, scrubby, scrub. Instead, I'm gonna just tap in literally once and just really, really get that excess off. And then I'm gonna take the very tips of the bristles and just lightly start to press that blush into where I want it. And you can see the color is slowly building we're not lifting up anything underneath, and it's just much more controlled. Now, we're gonna do powder highlighter. We're gonna use Benefits Tickle. And the same thing on this side. We're gonna come in here and just pick up unnecessary product and start scrubbing it all over this cheekbone. Now, honestly, if you have perfect skin, and if you don't have texture here, doing this and blowing it everywhere can actually look really, really pretty. But for me, I have ice pick scars all over here. I've got pimple scars. It's just the texture there is not nice to see. Yes, it is giving us a beautiful shifting glow, but if you struggle with texture, there is a better way to do it. What I'm gonna do is tap in, get all sides of the brush saturated, and then tap off the excess. You can already kind of see where our Charlotte Tilbury highlighter is, so I, in fact, I don't even need powder highlighter on this side, but I'm gonna do it anyway. What I do is I just like to tap little swipes just over the areas where I don't have texture. Now, I did a TikTok video on this and not everybody liked it because people said highlighter is supposed to, you know, have that whole area glow. I, you can do that if you want, but Personally, for me, 
I just have too much texture there to feel comfortable doing that. So what I do is I just place it right on the high point really tap the brush off and then with any excess product I'm going to blend out the edges. This is going to allow us to have that natural glow but we're not choking it with so much product. If you are a texture queen like me then you will understand. Stunning. This is this is where we're at now. This is the base. Next up we're going to do setting spray. Now a lot of people actually do this what I'm about to show you on this side but at least in my experience it, it doesn't work the best for me. I'm going to take the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I'm just going to try and hide this side of my face and a lot of people will saturate their face with this. Do you know what I'm saying? Just like really, really go in there. And to be honest, the reason why a lot of the 2016 beauty gurus saturated their face with so much shedding spray is to counteract the fact that they used so much powder. A lot of powder can lead to dryness and cakiness. So these beauty gurus would say, don't worry about that. Just spray some spray on and that will fix it. In my experience, the only thing that does is create clay on your face. Yes, it is going to hydrate the powder and yes, you are going to look less cakey, but when you really get up close and especially throughout the day when you start moving and creasing, think of it like wet clay. That's what it's going to do. When powder absorbs water, it turns into this, I don't know how to say it, clay-like substance. This is also taking forever to fucking dry. While this dries, I'm going to show you what I do instead. Again, same product, but I'm going to hold it farther away from my face and I'm just going to do quick light snaps with it and then let that dry. We don't look cakey and we don't look dry on this side so we don't need much of this. Now while well, this side has already dried down and we look perfect it's just taking the edge off of that powder and it's just going to help everything melt together. Um, this side's already dry and we're ready to go. This side I can I can just feel it. It's not dry, it's refusing to dry because we've got so much on. You see areas like this and specifically over here and in the nose. Can you see all that gathering of the setting spray? What the setting spray's done is wet this whole area and then gravity has caused it to drip. So any all this powder and foundation is starting to gather in a little wet spot. So now we're gonna move on to the eye area. Oh my God, and I just went to wipe my, wipe my brows and they're still wet. So for the brows, we're gonna use kind of a controversial product. This is the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. I'm being careful with my words. No, there is not a right or wrong way to use it, but this product has a massive, massive learning curve to it. So on this side, I'm just gonna brush out all my hairs that are saturated in product. And we are gonna go straight in to the pomade and just load up this brush. This is what a lot of people used to do. Even Anastasia herself, bitch, said that she would just sit back and watch. This is what you wanna avoid. Any like long motions, do you know what I mean? So any harsh motions like this one. If you like that harsh looking brow or that sharp line, you can do it. But like at the moment, I'm kind of gonna teach you a hybrid between full and fluffy, but still filled in brows. What you really, really don't wanna do is bring this line right to the front like this. I see people doing this a lot, doing that. Then we're just gonna use one thick motion to fill in the end of the brow. Don't lie, I know you've seen, you know those 2016 beauty gurus doing this. And then we're bringing that harsh line right to the front again. That is just offensive. And people used to, you know, bring in the pomade like this. They would bring it nice and close to the front. Nobody ever liked really blocky brows. So what people would do instead is do this and then take the spoolie and use that to feather in the front, which I mean, it kind of does work, but it still looks really harsh. And that harsh line we did on the top and the bottom, that's really, really hard to conceal. This is how you use dip brow instead. I'm gonna pick some up on the brush and then take the back of my hand to just get that in to the brush and really flatten the bristles. We're gonna brush up our hairs. Now on your nice thin brush, you're gonna follow the natural direction of your hairs and use up flicking motions. And my favorite, favorite thing to do with dip brow is the hairs underneath. Instead of doing that harsh line, you can still get that definition, but get it in a much more natural way. Take the angled bit of your brush and just use that and start 
pulling and creating some natural hair strokes underneath. Can you see what I mean? Same thing, I'm just going back and just picking up product and flattening the brush. For the front of the brow, we're gonna do the same thing, but my hairs grow up. So I'm gonna flick the brush upwards. Filling it up here, as you can see, I kind of have a blank spot. So I'm just gonna take the brush and almost stamp some hairs on there. Now, same thing underneath at the front, instead of that harsh line, you just wanna look down and start stamping in some natural hairs. And here is where the spoolie becomes magic. They look a little bit harsh, a little bit painted on. So I'm gonna take the spoolie and just brush in the direction of them. It's gonna keep them there, but it's just gonna blur them a little bit. Then to really add some texture and dimension, I'm gonna take this, it's the Anastasia Tinted Brow Gel, and I'm just gonna run it through the hairs. It's gonna keep them in place, but it's also, it's just, you're playing with different textures. You've got the brow pomade underneath, and this is just gonna build up your natural hairs and just create an overall more natural, fluffy looking brow. Now look at the difference. I have still gone dark on this side because I'm a sucker for dark brows. Some people don't like them, but I do like very dark eyebrows. They're both dark. They're both using the same products, but this just looks a lot better. This looks very much stamped on. You can see the lines and there is no texture or dimension out here. Whereas this, we're, we're following the same shape. It just looks a lot better. I don't know how to explain it. Can you see with your eyes? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now on top of this, what we'll see is people carving them out with concealer. I'm using the same concealer. People will pick up a fuck ton of product on a flat brush and they will carve out all underneath the brow. Yes, this does give it, you know, that sharp look and it defines it, but you're gonna see in a second what I mean. Even if we give it a fair run and I go to blend this concealer out, shoving one shade under the brow just, it's not nice because then look at what happens when we get out here and we start to blend it out. The highlight concealer should be only right there, but because we've pulled it all the way out into the tail, what the fuck is that done? Like, can you see what's going on out here? And also, concealer should not be used to prime the eyes. It is okay if you're doing it for like a quick photo shoot or something, but if you're doing it for a night out or an event where you need it to last, concealer has oils in it. Concealer has things in it that are meant to mesh into your skin. Your eyelids are very oily and they crease and concealer is just not built for this environment. Even when you go in with eyeshadow and stuff, the oils from your eyelid are gonna combine with this and combine with the eyeshadow and everything is gonna crease. If you do want to carve out the brow a little bit, I'm taking the same concealer on the same brush even and I'm just lightly placing it right on the highlight point. And then I'm gonna take a little brush and just tap at the edge and pull down to blend this out. Now, because we haven't loaded up too much product, we still have that cut and that highlight, but this situation here, is not happening. This is the effect that I prefer rather than just slamming that everywhere. To prime your eyes for eyeshadow, you should be using an actual eyeshadow primer. The MAC Paint Pot is a good one, but the one that I like to use is this one by Sigma. And this one actually has a bit of color and it's in the shade Earthen. And I'm gonna place that all over the lid. This is wax based. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna prevent creasing. It's gonna cling to your eyeshadows and it's gonna help block the oil that your eyelid produces. In other words, it's gonna keep your eyeshadow intact all night or all day long. With that gently placed on the eye, I'm gonna take a fluffy brush and start to tap that out. Then, because my one has a little bit of color, I'm just gonna blend out the edges up into that concealer. And this is already starting to give us a crease shade. Now, moving on to eyeshadow, I'm gonna use the Natasha Denona The Glam Palette. Mine is messy, but Let's ignore that. This is what she looks like. On the don't side, I'm gonna take this crease shade right here. I'm gonna take it on this brush, which it's fluffy, but it's it's not suitable for the crease. And I am gonna really, really, really pick up that eyeshadow. This is what you do not want to do. Scrub. Immediately going in and scrubbing quite harshly like that, especially with a brush that's not super fluffy can just really start to disturb everything, especially we've got such a thick layer of concealer underneath. And I'm gonna be a little bit dramatic with the eyes just to really get my point across. We're gonna do a little bit of blending on the edge and just like go like that. Instead, I'm gonna take it on a much fluffier and rounder brush. And we're gonna go in with the exact same shade, little bit, and then tap off any excess. You wanna start by holding your brush at the end 
and just doing very, very light circle motions right in your crease. I like to start on my outer corner because that's where I want most of the darkness to be. So I'm just starting with little circles in this area, really, really, really getting that shadow down. Then I'm gonna tap off a couple times and even gentler, gentler, gentlier, whatever. We're gonna start to buff out the edge just with the tips of the bristles. And because we already have a colored eye primer on, the blend is gonna be so much faster and so much easier. And there we go. So quick and easy. Now, to build up some depth, we are gonna go in with the shade Lash Line. This side, I'm gonna take the same brush that I use to apply my crease shade. There are a couple reasons why you should change brushes, but I'm gonna explain that as I go. Dipping into a shit ton of product and going straight in and following that shape. Number one, the darker the shade, the smaller your brush should be. This is what's gonna help get that soft gradient from light to dark. Or if you don't have another brush, just be a little bit gentler. Just buff it on slightly using only the bristles, the tips of the bristles. Also, number two, it's nicer to have two separate brushes because then you have more options to blend. I will show you that on this side in a second. We're just shoving the dark all through here. And then now when you go to blend it out, your brush is covered in product. So when you go to blend out the edges, the darkness just carries on and it does not look nice. Instead, we're actually going to take the same brush, but remember on this side, we use this brush instead for the crease, nice and big and fluffy. And this one is just slightly smaller and more precise. I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of the shade to start and then tap it off. We're doing the same, same little motions just in this outer area, because this is where I want the most depth, little circles, and we're just placing it. And then I'm going to go really, really light on the edges to blend. Now, the reason why it's nice to keep your other brush free is this brush already has our crease shade on it so we can go in and blend straight on top of that darker shade and it's really 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 gonna blow it out it's gonna melt the crease shade into it now I'm gonna go in with that same brush as before and tap in tap off and we're gonna start slowly, slowly building up the color. You see, it's so much easier to layer eyeshadows and build depth because the same concept this whole video is that it's easier to add than it is to take away. And then to finalize the blend, I'm gonna take my crease brush and just fluff it right through there. And look at that blend fucking easy okay now i want some shimmer on this side we're going to take this shade this is the shade in a corner there is kind of a smart way to place shimmers but it's going to be hard for me to explain because we all have such different eye shapes so i'm going to show you how i do it on my hooded eyes this is what i would not do i'm not going to take the shimmer with my finger and just pop it straight on the center of the eyelid like that now that's all i'm going to do for that side and as you can see because i have hooded eyes when i look forward it disappears you can't see it, where's it gone? That might look beautiful, that might look pretty, but I'm not walking around like that. I'm walking around like this and you can't see it. So what do I do? I'm gonna take the same shade and I'm gonna pick it up on a little, little fluffy flat brush like this. As we were saying before, I kept this whole inner corner area nice and bright to open the eye, but it's also saving space for shimmer. So I'm gonna start by applying the shimmer just on my inner eyelid right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly bring the shimmer nice and high. When I look forward, this is where my eyelid is. So I'm just gonna take the shimmer a little bit higher than that and kind of do this kind of motion. That little swoop right there is what I do on me. And whilst, yes, it does look pretty when my eyes are closed, when my eyes are open, you can still see that brightness and that little glitter. I'm gonna take this shimmer shade on my little inner corner right there. Again, that's gonna even further help the visibility of it and it's gonna open up our hoods. And this is personal preference, but for me, I like to bring a tiny bit of shimmer just on that little inner under bit of the eye. It's just, it's so brightening and you can see it even when my eyes are open. So my camera cut off and decided to stop recording. So I'm just gonna quickly explain what I have done. On this side, I have taken that dark shade all the way across to the inner corner. Whereas on this side, I've just focused it just out here. I used a tiny little smudger brush taking the shade lash line 
and I just smudged it right over there. Then on this side, I added some black eyeliner just to this outer bit, and I kept this inner bit nice and free and open. What this has done is it's pulled up the eye and it's given me some shape. This eye, in combination with the fact that the eyeshadow is facing down, is just giving me almost a doll look. It almost looks quite scary and quite stark. I've also kept the waterline free of any liner, and yes, this can open the eye, but I think in my opinion on my eyes, when I do this, it just looks a bit, I don't know, hey, it looks menacing. It looks kind of scary. My eyes are thin, my brows are pulled up and I like everything to be lifted up. I want that facelift because my hood, the hood of my eye drags my eye down. So I want to pull everything up and I've just done a tiny, tiny little line all the way from the inner corner to the outer corner. And I've added a little wing, which is going to further enhance that pull. On this side, we're going to add a nice thick black line and we're going to drag it down and stop it there. First of all, on my eyes, they're hooded. So a thick black line is going to cover my whole eyelid. Can you see on the side how you can still see my lid and you can still see the shimmer? On this side, that black has completely hidden it. It's hidden it and it's just made my eyes look very flat. Do you know what I mean? Mm -mm. For mascara, we're going to take the Benefit Bad Gal Bang. There's not really an extreme no way of how to do mascara, but I'm just going to show you. On this side, I'm gonna really, really, really load up my lashes with a shit ton of product. And I'm also gonna take a lot of it and coat my under eye lashes. Here is how I apply mascara. I apply my heaviest dose, if that's what you wanna call it, to this, this outer corner. I don't really do any fancy techniques or anything. I literally just scrub this out a bit. Then once I have really laid down that product, I'm gonna turn the brush and I'm just gonna lightly come in here and coat the inner lashes. Now for the under eye, again, we want that pull. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little, little bit of it and just run it across the outer lashes. I'm actually not gonna put any mascara on this inner corner. This side, you can see that it kind of it's, it, it's round. This side, without putting mascara there, it disguises it. It makes it look nice and bright and keeps that pulling effect. Now we're gonna apply lashes. A lot of people struggle with lashes and I am so like pedantic about them. I can spot when something is wrong. So on this side, we're gonna take the Lily Lashes in the style Milan. As you can see, these are huge. These are big and I have not trimmed them. So I've applied the glue and a mistake a lot of people make is they don't let it dry. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to chuck it on and I'm bringing this really, really close to my inner corner. First of all, the lash glue is not fully dry. So it's kind of just, it's not sticking, but this is what we're getting. It's a very, very, very big lash. And again, my eyes are hooded. I like big lashes, but they need to be specifically made. Do you know what I mean? Or specifically applied. This one, I've taken it way too close to my inner corner and it's just completely closed that whole area off. And they're just too big. They're too big. They touch my eyebrows and it's not the look I'm going for. On this side, we're going to take the style Doha. Can you see how much more subdued these are? And I have trimmed the lash band. You can see they're not a full lash. I've literally just taken scissors and cut off that last cluster and it's going to fit on my eyes much better. I'm going to apply a light coat of glue and we're going to let that get tacky. After about 30 seconds, it's nice and sticky. On this side, I placed it really close to my inner corner. On this side, I'm kind of going to go more on the outskirts. I'm laying it on my lash line, securing that inner corner. You can see how much space I've given. And on this outer corner, what I like to do is I like to wing it up a little bit. I like to kind of place it like that and then take the end of your tweezers or whatever and then use this to press them up. Now look, it's still a big lash. It's still heavy and it still has a lot of definition, but rather than this side where it's full all the way across, this side, all of the fullness is focused on this outer corner, which is again, gonna contribute to that pull. And we've kept this whole area nice and bright. So our eyes look open and just, it looks better. It looks better. Do I need to use words to explain? Now, zooming you out, I think you can see the difference from way back there. Like, come on. Now for the lips. We're gonna do a bright red lip today and I'm gonna really show you the difference that this technique is gonna make. I'm gonna take the Anastasia lipstick in the shade American Doll. And on this side, I'm just gonna take the lipstick bullet straight to my lip and fill my lips in. It doesn't look bad. It's a pretty color and if you want that flat lip look, 
then go for that. I'm gonna take the Anastasia lip liner in the shade Malt. This is a dark brown, and I'm gonna use this to line my lips. This is a lot easier than a lipstick because it's a pencil. You're gonna get a much sharper and more precise lip line. And now I'm gonna take this and just lightly fill in these corners. Then taking a little flat brush, I'm gonna use this to blend out these edges. Now we're gonna take our American Doll lipstick and we're gonna place it straight on top. This is much safer for me because now I don't have to worry about getting such a precise lip line with a little lipstick tube. And yes, we are going over the lip liner. And do you see that effect? This is great if you want Again, that popping color. But I think this side just looks a lot more sophisticated. You're contouring the lips. The outside is darker and the inner is where the color is. I just think it gives shape. It looks a lot better. So we have come to the end of the video. I wanna hear from you, bitch. Which side do you prefer? Because this looks scary. I look like a clown. My skin hurts. It's really heavy. But then this side, it's giving Hollywood. It's giving fresh skin. And my eyes look nice and open. If you learned something in this video, make sure to press like and of course press subscribe. If you have any questions, any concerns, any video ideas or anything you just want to say, then leave them in the comments below and I will see you next Sunday at 5pm. Goodbye.